Holy smokes. It's been a busy morning, but I am so happy to be here with you today. Doc Robin here. Welcome to your weekly energy update for, let's see, this is the week of February 6th, actually. And today is Tuesday, February 7th. So welcome. If you're here with me live, say hi so I can say hi back. And if you're watching the recording, do the same because I always love to come back in here and see what your takeaways are and see how this podcast or this, this message has supported you. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with our energy update for this week. I just got back from Sedona last night. My husband and pup and I just went up there. In fact, my husband just came in to give Cooper some more water and he's on his way out. There we go. Okay, so there we go. All right, so this this past weekend for me, hey sis, how you doing? Say who that is. I can't see who you are in the in the comments here on on uh, Streamyard. So let me know who's if you're here watching live. I'd love to know who that is, so I can say hi back. Oh, it's Faye. Hi, honey. Mwah. Good to see you. Okay, so a couple of things to keep in mind this week. I was tuning in over the weekend. I was in Sedona and Boynton Canyon, which is my very favorite part of the world. Um, I actually believe that it's a portal for all kinds of really high frequencies that are coming through right now. Um, they're using that particular place in the world just as a place where the veils between the worlds are thin. And certainly I had a lot of experiences this weekend that would suggest just that the worlds, the veils between the worlds are thin right now. Um, so I was consulting with my guides on this week to see what messages they had for you. And one of the things that we're being encouraged to do right now is intelligent, intuitive people. There are so many of us who continue to give primacy to our reason, to our intellect, to our logical minds. And in the past that has served as well. And those days are quickly coming to an end. Um, there is an awakening that is happening on this planet right now, an awakening to who you really are from a spiritual and energetic perspective that goes beyond something that the rational mind can explain, understand, or even necessarily embrace. Um, Einstein, remember, is credited with saying that um, intuition is a sacred gift and reason is its faithful servant. And we are living in a world that really has given primacy to the servant, the rational mind, and has almost forgotten the gift of intuition. Now, I know you haven't, and I certainly haven't, but many people have. And when you're working in healthcare, when you're working in tech, when you're working in biotech or anything that gives a, a primacy to intellect, it's going to feel very edgy for you to come in with your intuition. It's going to feel very, very kind of crunchy for you to show up in your full intuitive self, even when other people are choosing not to, and even when, in fact, some people are not able to tune into their intuition. But that does not mean that you can't, and it does not mean that you should not tune into your intuition and start really relying on that going forward now and in the future, even if you're not, I'll say, out of the closet in your in your particular organization. It can get lonely, though. If you are one of the only, if you feel like you're one of the only intuitives in the room, it can get lonely. And that's one of the reasons why we have this actualization zone is for those of us who are both intuitive and intelligent. So that's kind of the opening salvo of this message this week. What I want to share with you today is going forward this week, what I'm going to, what you're being asked to tune into is this, is tuning into your intuition every single day. And starting to look at the world through the lens of synchronicities and serendipities rather than through the lens of throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks or does it make rational sense? Does it make logical sense? Often the intuition does not make rational sense or logical sense. In fact, <clears throat> I wrote a, a really, I contributed to a really important paper in decision making years ago when I was doing my PhD work on how people make decisions about their careers. One of the things that we know for sure is that most of our decisions, something I think upwards about 90% of our decisions are made intuitively. And then we make up rational reasons for why we've chosen the decision that we've chosen. So the first thing is to acknowledge 
that many of your decisions, many of the ways that you're thinking about the world are intuitive. And let's just celebrate that. So that's number one, celebrate your intuition. Celebrate your capacity to know things without knowing why you know them, without having to explain yourself to anybody. Celebrate when you're guided. Celebrate when something shows up in your world that feels very magical or very synchronistic. Carl Jung, the great psychologist, wrote about synchronicities as being meaningful coincidences. So this is a week that the encouragement is this. Activate the energy of curiosity and show up every moment of the day looking for synchronicities and serendipities. Write them down, report them. This is important. It's important for your conscious rational mind to be able to see the data that's associated with these serendipities and synchronicities. If you don't write them down, it becomes sort of a thing of myth and legend. And maybe that happened and maybe it didn't happen. And maybe you'll gaslight yourself about something that was a synchronicity. And we want to avoid that as much as possible. So the encouragement this week, activating curiosity, the synchronicities, let me give a couple of examples of that. One of the synchronicities that I love that just tells me that I'm on the right track are what we call angel numbers. So those are numbers that occur at least three at a time. It's even better in my mind if there's like four or five of them in a row, like 555 or 666 or 777, any of the angel numbers that come forward to you. Let that be... I mean, you can go into numerology and look up what does 333 mean or what does 999 mean. That's cool too, if you want to dive deeper into it. But at least on the surface, this week, I want you to start looking for angel numbers. And I want you to just let those angel numbers be a nod that you're in synchronistic alignment. It's just a nod from the universe that I'm here and you're here and I see you and you see me. My dad and I still call each other to this day. We've done this for 20 years at this point. Whenever we see a license plate number that has a 444 or 555 in it or whatever triple digit is in it, we'll call each other and say hello. So I use that as a point of connection with my dad, who's one of my first spiritual teachers. All right. So you can, again, if you want to dive into the numerology and understanding what the, the triple digits mean, that's fine too. But on a very just top level, if you can just start asking for and intending to see these synchronicities, these moments of connection between you and all that is, that's going to shift your perspective when it comes to accessing and aligning with your intuition, which is really the first step in becoming a channel for any high frequency consciousness state, including wealth consciousness that you know I've been talking about for a while. So that's the energy update today. Activate curiosity. Wonderment is another really good thing to activate. And then just, just ask. Just ask the universe. Show me some triple numbers. Show me some 333s today. Uh, another good, so you can look at license plates. You can look at digital clocks. I love 1111s. I love 333s. So once you see those, just take a breath and allow those to kind of just drop into your consciousness as, oh, that's lined up for me. Everything is lined up. Everything is lined up. And just breathe and see how that shifts your perspective this week. That is my best advice today. I will see you in the Facebook group. If something really landed for you today that you loved or that made a lot of sense for you, please let me know in the comments. It always helps me to further support you when you do that. All right. Until next week. See you later. Bye.